This video is for educational purposes only and only competent persons should attempt this installation. Hi, this is Bill for Sparky Channel. And let's say that this box is in a garage. The circuit is not protected by GFCI. The main panel is from the 60s and no GFCI breaker is available for the old panel. And you want to protect this circuit with GFCI. Also, the receptacle in this box is most upstream on this circuit. So you would like to replace this receptacle with a GFCI receptacle in order to protect the entire circuit. But the replacement is complicated by a switch being in the same box and a total of four cables coming into the box. The first action we'll take is to see what we have to work with. I'll plug in my outlet tester and the two green lights indicate correct wiring. Then I'll turn the light on and off to test it. Now I'll test with my meter and find that we have 121 volts AC, which is excellent voltage. Then I'll take the black lead out of the neutral side of the receptacle and put it in the ground, which shows a similar voltage. So we have a good ground. Now that I've found that everything is working correctly, I'll turn off the circuit breaker. Be sure to double check that the breaker is off. I'll take off the faceplate, loosen the screws that hold the devices in place, and pull out the receptacle and switch. I'll remove the ground, the neutral, and the hot from the receptacle. I'll remove the mud plate to increase viewer visibility. Now that the mud plate is off, I'll show a clip from a previous video so that you'll know what the red and yellow markings on some wires are for. I have wire connectors on all of the hots and neutrals for safety because I'm going to do a test to find out which hot wire is the line wire, which is the one which will bring the electrical energy into the box. Now I'll turn on the circuit breaker and I'll use my fluke voltage detector to find which is the line wire. The tester tip will turn red and it will sound an audible alarm when the line wire is found. I'll mark the line wire and its neutral with red electrician's tape. This cable is the one that goes to the light, so I'll mark its hot and neutral wires with some gold tape. So here's our GFCI, and I'm going to go ahead and hook the ground wire to it, and tighten it securely. So here's our, our line wires, we marked them with red. It says line right here, line. Here's another photo of the line portion of the GFCI. You can see the brass colored terminal on your left and that's where the hot wire goes. And then in this photograph, you can see the silver terminal on your right and that's where the neutral wire will go. So here are our conductors, the hot and the neutral for the line cable that brings the electrical energy into this box. These are the ones we're going to want to connect to the line area of the GFCI. So we'll take the neutral, put it right in there, tighten it securely, and we'll take the hot line wire, and put it right in there, so we have this white neutral jumper that was going to the receptacle that was in here. And that's going to go to the load. Okay. So this is your load area right here. Okay. So we're going to put that right in there and tighten it down securely. Now we have a jumper that was going to the receptacle. And you always have to loosen these load terminals up. This is the hot jumper. And we're going to go to the load bronze colored side. And tighten it down securely. Okay, so let me show you what we got. We got the grounds back here in the back of the box. 
We got a green ground jumper going to this receptacle. We got a green ground jumper going to the switch. For the line of the GFCI, we have the two conductors that we marked red. These are the ones that bring the electrical energy into the box, and we tested for them. And these are the wires that bring the current into the box. So that goes to the line, that goes to the line portion. And then we have the load portion of the GFCI here. And we have a jumper that goes to this WAGO. And over here, we have a jumper that goes to this WAGO. In this way, your hot energy comes in here and then it goes out and this GFCI protects everything beyond this. This is your most upstream receptacle here and because uh, everything else is hooked on to the load portion of this GFCI, the light will be protected, the switch will be protected, uh, these two cables going here will be protected, everything downstream will be protected by this GFCI. You see there's a slightly different wiring when we have a regular receptacle versus a GFCI receptacle. Okay, so now we have to dress these wires. So this I'm gonna push back into the back of the box. And then the white, the black wires are kind of a mess right now. Okay, there we go. Put the mud ring on. I'll put some electrician's tape around the terminals of the devices for safety. Now we'll attach the devices to the mud ring. A tip is to put your screw exactly in the middle of the horizontal slots of the yoke of the devices. And in this way, your cover should fit perfectly the first time. If not, you can give it a little bit of adjustment and then it'll fit. Now with the cover on, we'll turn on the circuit breaker and then press the reset button and we see the light came on. Now we're gonna test out the switch. The switch is working great. Now I'm gonna put my outlet tester and the two green lights indicate correct wiring. The grounding and everything is wired correctly. And here we go, in the other half of the outlet, it also works correctly. Now I'll press the test button and we see that the light goes out. So the GFCI is controlling that switch and light. This video is a part of a five part series. Number one in the series is about box fill calculations with new 2020 NEC changes in ground wire fill. Number two in the series is a quicker way to do box fill calculations. You're not actually cheating, but I called it cheat mode. And number three is answering a viewer's questions about do pigtails count in the 2020 NEC calculations? and how to handle the seven ground wire. Number four in the series was wiring challenge. Can Sparky do it? Five cables and two devices. And then the one you just saw is number five. And that was in response to viewers wanting to see the receptacle replaced with a GFCI. So I did it. So that's five videos in the series. And I'll put a link in my video description for that playlist. I'll also put links in my video description for the ideal circuit breaker finder kit. Uh, and I use that outlet tester in the video. I'll put a link for the Kinepex electrical installation tool. And I'll put a link for the popular volt claw that I push the wires with. I'll put a link for the Fluke voltage detector. And I'll put a link for the Fluke 117 electrician's meter. Thanks. I hope this video was helpful.